What's up, guys? DLE Kamel here, and we are in Yu-Gi-Oh! Cross Duel. And what I wanted to do was talk about all of the ace monsters, since that is the first thing that you are going to have to choose. That is the first choice you're gonna have to make. You're gonna have to make a choice between 13 of the 14 ace monsters to be your first one. Now, something that I want to discuss while you are in this stage of the game. You can reset your progress on Yu-Gi-Oh! Crawl Stool. All you have to do is delete the game and then reinstall it. Once you reinstall the game, it takes about 15 minutes from installing the game to for you to get to the same point in which you do your gacha pulls. Because while you are able to choose one Ultra Rare Monster for free, what is truly going to determine what deck you play is what you pull in your upcoming gacha pulls. You're going to have access to three... 10 pulls that you're able to do after you finish the tutorial and that along with what you choose for your ace monster is really going to be a um what you choose to um you know to play for your deck so for example i chose trickstar holly angel for my ace monster but then i got to number 39 utopias so i went from holly angel being my ace to utopia being my ace but nevertheless we're going to discuss all of the ace monsters what their strengths are what their weaknesses are and uh, you know, you know, see what playstyle is for you. And uh, yeah, so we're gonna start first with Dark Magician. Uh, also, I'm I'm not gonna like try to rank these on a tier scale, but I'm I am gonna let, let you know which ones are weaker, which ones are stronger, which ones are for certain situations. So Dark Magician, firstly, and we're gonna be comparing the master skills since this is what you're really gonna be going for on them. Uh, Durb Magician's Master Skill says, if you activate a spell card, inflict 300 damage to all other players. So, Dark Magician works very well with Trickstar Holly Angel. If you are able to have access to both of these monsters, they do work very well together. However, Dark Magician itself is rough to gain an advantage on. It itself is just a beat stick that has a skill condition that does not deal with itself in battle what or at all and that can put you on the weak side some of the very strong monsters in cross duel like blue eyes and utopia and neos they always give advantages to the monster to make them more threatening dark magician kind of just gives you an added bonus in the background but it does have good skills as well like provoke and attack debuff so these are some good general skills but as your ace monster i personally would not pick dark magician i don't think the strategies including him are strong enough to uh, you know make them a deck on its own you're gonna need a lot of other stuff a lot of other a lot of other ultra and sr monsters to make this competent so on to the best choice by far i believe is blue eyes white dragon blue eyes white dragon i will say this now before i get into the other cards blue eyes white dragon is the best monster in cross duel all around best monster why its master skill reads when summoned, select and destroy one monster. That is one, any monster on the field, anywhere. You can destroy it. The only case in which you cannot destroy a monster is where um, when a monster has destruction protection or if you uh, attempt to destroy a monster and then, and then their shield handler trap card activates, granting them destruction protection. Other than that, you can destroy anything with blue eyes and that is why it is... The most used um card it was in the beta and the soft launch it's definitely still the strongest here some of its other skills if you get them blue eyes with multiple skills can really make it threatening crusher just makes your 300 beat stick hurt your opponent all the way more through uh, while you're trying to get through their defenses and stuff like attack supplement will make your blue eyes even stronger even after it you know battles an opponent getting to their life points so a multiple blue eyes is going to look pretty stacked with the master skill attack supplement and pressure so blue eyes is the best general monster and it is the best low maintenance monster in the game you don't need any other high level um, high rarity monsters in the game to play blue eyes you just need blue eyes with the master skill and hopefully some duplicates later on to really make your blue eyes a powerhouse next we've got neos i played neos uh, exclusively in the beta I only played him let's check out his master skill Neo says when destroyed in battle this monster returns to the hand and gains speedy summon and super speed so what does speedy summon say speedy summon says 
can be summoned with one material less, but loses 1,000 attack, defense, and it gets efficient summon, which means you will be able to summon it just, you know, instead of two tributes, you'll be able to summon it with one tribute. And then super speed will allow it to boost its movement speed by 50%. So, Neos, I believe, is the monster that it, it is one of the most effective monsters in Cross Duel when you have duplicates. And I believe Neos is very duplicate, uh, he's very duplicate reliant. So on top of having Neos' master skill, what you also want are things to make Neos initially useful. So when your Neos is destroyed and it comes back, it will come back with wow. speedy summon and super speed. However, it will also have any of these other skills that you have that you put on your Neos initially. It will also have those skills also on your Neo. So if it comes back with speedy summon and super speed, and you already have speedy summon and super speed on your Neos beside it, you have three skills. Guess what? When you bring your Neos back, you're going to be able to summon it without tributing, and it's going to reach your opponent's life points in one turn because it'll have double super speed and you'll have double speedy summon. So Neos at three at three uh, skills is pretty busted. Although as speedy summon, you are summoning a 1500 attack point Neos. Keep that in mind, but you can do it. It is absolutely insane. Triple Neos is crazy. However, you do have to, you know, think that if you do have triple Neos, you're not going to have an abundance of monsters on the board. You're really going to be depending on Neos getting to your opponent's life points, coming back to your hand, doing it again, doing it again, doing it again. So Neos can be pretty busted. Just keep in mind, those duplicates is what really makes Neos insane. Next, we've got Ojama King. Ojama King is the control boss monster in the game, and it's uh, it was new as of the soft launch. All right, so he says, when summoned, select an opponent. They cannot summon monsters to any of their three monster zones until the end of the next turn. That is Ojama King's master skill, and it is is absolutely busted ojama king can just absolutely prevent you from playing the game albeit this ability will activate during the battle phase in a turn because it only activates when the monster is summoned so they will be able to play for that turn but the following turn they will not be able to summon monsters and they won't be able to play spell cards like monster reborn or anything else that resummons cards from the graveyard during the battle phase because they can't summon to their zone so ojama king is pretty nice however ojama king is very you know he he has he takes up the control aspect of a deck but he does not aggress himself you see here he has three thousand defense he's not meant to attack he has skills like defense boost defense supplement you know, defense support, stuff like this. He's not meant to, you know, get up there. And immunity position change is going to be also very good on him. But the real strength of Ojama King is running him with a very powerful ace monster like Blue Eyes or Firewall Dragon. And you really only want to use Ojama King when it's absolutely necessary. And you may not even want to use its master skill if you're using it as a secondary boss monster. I believe when you use Ojama King as on his master skill, it will become a fusion monster. And then its summoning conditions are going to become a little more harder to do. Whereas if you use one of these smaller skills like defense buff or defense supplement, it'll still be a, it will still be a, um, an effect monster. So you'll be able to summon a 3000 defense monster with one tribute. So it depends on what you need it for. But again, Ojama King is very dependent of you having a competent attacking strategy already somewhere else because Ojama King is not going to bring you attacks. Keep that in mind when you're picking your boss monster. I don't think you want to pick Ojama King as your ace. Stardust is also a very popular ace monster in the game. Its master skill reads, while on the field, all of your level 3 or lower monsters gain reincarnation. Now, I've misquoted this skill in my video in multiple times because they changed the name. Reincarnation. This monster is, when destroyed, this monster is returned to your hand with negation applied to all of its skills. So this is pretty good. It lets you actually put up a defense in the early game so you're not allowed to waste your resources so that you can still use them for Stardust 
when you know the time comes that you want to use Stardust, you can send your monsters out to die, and then they'll come back to your hand so you can use them as tribute fo as synchro material fodder for Stardust. And then Stardust himself also has reincarnation on them that you can equip, so it is also very good with um, duplicates. However, it doesn't gain the super explosive buff that something like Neos does. However, being able to bring your Stardust back after it is destroyed to your hand is key. So I do think if you're going to play Stardust, you need to have or you have to have Reincarnation and the Master Skill on Stardust. So I'm going to say Stardust is not a bad pick for your Ace Monster. Just you have to build your entire deck around Reincarnation, which means you're going to be playing Ojamas. You're going to be playing the Hippos. You're going to be playing a lot of level 3 and lower monsters. And then you're going to want to find at least one more Stardust duplicate because you really need to have Reincarnation on your Stardust as well. So it's not just dead after you summon it. Okay. Next, we've got RDA. Something I didn't mention, Neos is also very good in raids too. Because when because in raids, you basically attack once and then your monster is gone. So Neos, he will attack and he'll be destroyed and he will come back, which is very good. Just thought I should touch on that, but that's it. Next, Red Dragon Archfiend. So Red Dragon Archfiend is one of the more skill-intensive ace monsters in the game. And I say skill-intensive, not in to say, like, you know, you need to be good. But you, you just have to watch out when you play him. Because you can end up backfiring on yourself. His master skill here says, at the end of the battle phase, you can destroy all defense position monsters. Basically, this will literally destroy anything on the field that is in defense. Um... Yeah, so okay, I was curious the difference between his two skills. His special skill only activates when it's summoned, and the master skill, it activates every single battle phase this card is on the field. So you have to be careful because if your Red Dragon Archfiend ever finds itself in defense position, it will destroy itself. Any of your monsters in defense, they will be destroyed by your Red Dragon Archfiend effect when it pops off at the end of the battle phase. So you do want to have some of these skills immunity to, to immune to destruction effects and intimidate what do these two do immune to destruction effects firstly is going to make it immune to its own destruction effect by being switched into defense which means your opponents are not going to be able to switch this into defense to remove it and then the the tie for the next ones are pierce and intimidate intimidate will switch any monster you attack into defense which is kind of, it's not going to really affect your skill because you have 3k attack. You should kill anything, including Ojama King. And then Pierce just allows you to attack your opponents through um, you destroying a defense position monster when you're at their life point. So I do think Pierce would be the best for the third skill. However, Red Dragon Archfiend, it's just, it's too easy to switch it into defense position to not have two RDAs, one with the immunity to defense destruction effects so i would not pick rda because you need to to even have this thing be safe to play it is so easy to switch guys to defense it's not even funny okay on to my ace number 39 utopia utopia's master skill says when destroying an opponent's monster in battle gains attack debuff times three so when utopia attacks when utopia destroys a monster it will gain this attack debuff skill it will gain three stacks of it, and that will make any further monster that you battle, it will lose 900 attack points. So this is very, very good. However, it has one key weakness, meaning, and that is that in defense, they will not lose defense points. So your Utopia will not decrease your defense. So if it if it wins its first battle, its attack is already low. It's definitely going to lose against a monster in defense. And Utopia, honestly does not have any skills to really get around that it has seal to make sure you can not make sure you don't have to deal with any you know troublesome stuff your opponent can throw at you um to lower your attack any further and it does have attack supplement to raise your attack after you win your first battle um bounce teleport is okay but you know i don't see people getting bounced too often so utopia really does not have too many good supporting skills to make up for its weakness so I would say Utopia is good at one if you want to play him. However, Utopia is probably the monster that benefits the most from spells and traps because there are so many spells and traps in Crawl Stool that can easily switch your opponent's battle positions and Utopia very well capitalizes off of that as well as he capitalizes off of the provoke mechanic 
which a lot of monsters in the game have. So Utopia, I think he's one of the more free-to-play friendly ace monsters because it does not require a bunch of ultra rare super rare monsters and none of his further skills are necessary they are nice to have but none of them are absolutely necessary and other monsters in the game make up for his weaknesses other monsters spells and traps make up for the game make up for his weaknesses better than having more duplicates of him or more high rarity cards all right that's why i like utopia so i think he's a pretty good choice Next, we've got Leviathan Dragon. Leviathan Dragon says, while on the field, all of your monsters gain focus. 100 more attack is gained from your monster's focus. So focus says, at the start of the battle phase, gain 200 attack. So I really do not like um, Leviathan Dragon. However, focus, what you want is you want your focus to stack for multiple turns. So you want to have... Your stuff like your Leviathan Dragon be able to sit by your life points and just keep gaining up focus until you're um, safe with them moving out into the battlefield being strong enough. I'm not a huge fan of this playstyle, and I don't really like it does take a lot of maintenance. You're going to need to play all in on focus, all focus monsters, all focus spells and traps. You're going to have to constantly be playing buff spells and traps and definitely immunity to position change because leviathan dragon's got zero defense man so yeah not amazing dude i definitely would not use it as your choice for an ace monster next we've got odd eyes odd eyes is another fan favorite for people in cross duel its master skill says when summoned if using the pendulum scale all of your monsters gain 800 attack and defense and immunity to destruction effects so how do you pendulum summon if you have both types of pendulum scales you can summon one normal effect or pendulum monster that requires up to two tribute materials without uh, without uh using their summoning materials so how do you pendulum summon so basically you have to have both of these scales just like how you pendulum summon in duel links or master duel you have to have a red scale and a blue scale and how do you get these scales basically you will summon a monster that has the red scale as a skill and you will summon a monster that has the blue scale as a skill and then once you do that you'll be able to pendulum summon and then you can pendulum summon odd eyes and then odd eyes will boost all your monsters by 800 and then make them immune to destruction effects which means this is a very good monster to play if you feel like you're having trouble with blue eyes so odd eyes is good for a ace monster choice however again if you're playing Odd Eyes, you must commit all to Pendulums because not only do you have to play the Pendulum Scales, but all of your monsters in your deck, you really need to be seeing blue and red Pendulum Scaled monsters. And yeah, I mean, honestly, after that, you are just big beaters. So you want to protect your big beater monsters for when your Odd Eyes hits the board. Yeah. Bloop Diva. Bloop Diva, the Melonious Choir. If you use an effect to gain life points, all of your monsters gain defense equal to the life points gained while on the field. 100 or more life points is gained from your monster's healer ability. So I am not a big fan of this defensive strategy just because it is focused around, you know, you have to play life point gaining effects and you have to play a defensive deck. You can't just play a defensive deck. And life point gain is okay, but the thing is, I feel like, you know, you're going to lose a lot of regular battles because your monsters are just going to be weaker than your opponents. They're not going to have the, you know, special abilities that help them win battles. They're not going to have attack boost. They're going to have healer, you know, and as, maybe all of that is going to come to you having more life points at the end of the day. I don't know if that's going to be the case, but you're going to lose a lot of battles all in the name of your melodious choir being able to constantly heal your life points and your melodious choir is not even that strong dude 2000 defense is not strong whatsoever so the stats on bloom diva are definitely not something that you know make me want to uh to pick it as my ace monster or even play a deck around it but it does have some pretty toxic skills like locked and curse curse is pretty nasty it basically gives your opponent infinite immobile and phantom which makes means whatever monster destroys blue diva will be useless hey firewall dragon 
Firewall Dragon's Master ability says when summoned, gains the following effect depending on the number of Link monsters or monsters with Link Arrow on your field or in your graveyard. At 1, it gains immunity to position change. At 2, it gains super speed. At 3, it gains a second stack of super speed. And at 4, you get to select one monster and return it to the hand. So Firewall Dragon is super duper busted. However, can you say it with me? You have to play all in to link monsters if you're going to play Firewall. So you got to play Decode Talker. You got to play Link Karibo. You got to play Backup Secretary. You got to play all of these link monsters because you need to have as many monsters with link arrows as possible. Now, the plus of Firewall Dragon is that they are allowed to be in your graveyard, which is super good. And at three link arrows used, used um, you know, in, in your graveyard or on the field, you will be able to hit your opponent's life points instantly with Firewall Dragon. So that's 2,500, boom, in one turn to your opponent's face. And if you have four, then you bounce anything. This is crazy. This is blue eyes on drugs. But the only thing is you need to, it requires a little bit more setup. You need four link arrow monsters, not four link arrows total, four link arrow monsters to get, you know, uh, the full power of this monster. And then Firewall is not, he, he is another monster that is not totally reliant on duplicates. Firewall is good at one because if you take a look at his other duplicates, none of them are super integral. Crush is nice. You know, defense debuff is nice. Crusher is okay. Immunity to bounce is very nice. You know, but you know, bounce is one of the more, you know, rarer effects. However, Firewall does have it. Attack buff is okay. It's not amazing. Attack, uh, you know, th these are not great. So Firewall is very good at one. He's a good choice for your ace monster, but most of the, you know, added support is going to come in the form of super rare monsters. But there are other rare and normal monsters that have the link arrow ability that you can use uh, when they're in your Firewall Dragon deck. So Firewall Dragon is definitely a top contender for your uh, ace monster. Here we've got Trickstar Holly Angel. The Holly Angel says, while in the field, your monster's snipe deals damage to all opponent players and your monster snipes deal more damage. So basically, instead of your snipe doing 200 damage, they will do 300 damage to every to everyone when Holly Angel is on the field. So Holly Angel also comes with immunity to position change. And I have to say, Holly Angel has uh, not so great duplicate options. They're okay. Um, the only thing I would want is... When you summon Holly Angel, it would be nice to have a snipe on top of it as well. So you can kind of get it going. It's not dependent on just other monsters. And immunity to position change is also very good. Because again, it's a Link monster. Link monsters have zero defense. But again, Holly Angel, I think this is one of the more very intricate deck strategies that is going to take some time for you to build, right? It's probably not best to pick Holly Angel unless from the start you're like, I want to play Burn 100%. Because the burn strategy is very expensive. You need super rare spells. You need super rare traps. You need super rare monsters. You need all the tree star monsters, especially. So it takes a lot of building. And, you know, I ended up picking Holly Angel and, you know, not being able to build a great deck. And the Utopia deck I built was better. So it's up to you, but it depends on how much you like burn. If you want to play burn, Trickstar Holly Angel does make burn very good. All right. Next, we've got Sevens Road Magician. It's... Uh, Master Skill says, when summoned, gains 400 attack and defense for each time your monster has activated Inventor this duel. If the effects of your monster's Inventor has activated four times or more during this duel, it also gains two random immunity skills. So, pretty sick. So, what does Inventor do? It will basically just give your monster anything. It gets one skill at random, and that's basically from, like, any of these, like, you know, random, like, skills. Like, it'll give you, like, seal, or it'll give you defense de boost or attack boost, or something like that. And then it says, when you have activated four inventors, it will get two random immunity skills. So it will gain uh, position change, wow. destruction. Uh, does it give you bounce? Very interesting. It will give you negation, destruction, and position change, but not bounce. That is very uh, interesting. But, uh, all right. Seven's Road, you know. Seven's Road is also very good if you have stacked 
obvious of him because you will have the ability to have seal right off the bat. Not having to deal with your opponent's um, skills is very, very important. Negating your own skills is huge because you do not want your seven zero magician to get to get negated because his skill needs to be active continuously while he's on the field. I don't know. I'm not a huge fan, but this guy can get very big. He can get up to like 5,000 attack points. I think Seven's Road can become the highest attack monster in the game, which is pretty insane. All right, and the final boss monster is Multi-Strike Dragon Dra Dragaeus. Dragaeus? Dragaeus? I'm going to have to ask James Brown how to say that again. All right, so his master skill says... While on the field, all of your monsters gain one extra attack. All of your monsters with two or more extra attack gain pierce. So what is extra attack? When attacking directly, gain 500 attack. So this, this strategy is very, very battle phase loaded. Like you do not see any advantage until you are able to connect with your opponent's face. So how do you connect with your opponent's face without any assistance from your boss monster to do that? You're going to need spells and traps, baby. You're going to need to be playing buff spells and traps. Rush recklessly. You know, double attack. You're going to need to be playing all sorts of stuff to buff you up. Reinforcements, shield and sword. Whatever you got to do. Because your monsters need to make it to your opponent's life points. Once they do, your extra attack is going to pop off. Your drag IS is giving everyone ultra uh, extra attack. And there's other cards like double shot that give you extra attack. And then you're going to be doing Pierce as well. Pierce is going to let, allow you to smash through defense position monsters. If someone sees you coming in with Dragaeus, they're definitely going to start putting up defense monsters. And Pierce is going to help you get around that. Now, oddly enough, um, Dragaeus himself does not have Pierce because it is one of his advantages from his master skill. And his extra skills are not amazing, but he does have extra attack himself. So I do think that's what I would do personally. Intimidate is nice, but you don't want Intimidate when you reach the opponent's life points because it will switch them into defense. However, this is implying that you're going to have Pierce activated, so maybe switching them into defense is the better option. I'm going to go with there are a lot of options for Dragaeus, but you're definitely going to want three skills on your Dragaeus. Getting him at one is just, it's just not good enough. You're you need him to also give you extra attack. It's pretty integral to, you know, him actually being usable. Okay, guys. That was all of the Ultra Monsters. This video is almost 30 minutes, so I'm going to quickly sum up what I think is the best. And there's also Exodia, but you can't choose Exodia. That's why I didn't talk about them. Basically, Exodia has this thing where every time you draw a normal monster, you get one counter, and when you get to five counters, you win. The Master Skill um exodia gains 500 attack every time you gain a counter and he's a guardian monster which means he's not going to be on the field he's kind of like behind you which means instead of attacking your life points they attack exodia first so once exodia is destroyed that's it your entire exodia strategy is done and all you have is a deck full of vanilla monsters so yeah maybe a video on exodia later because you can't pick him with your ace monster so that's why i didn't want to talk about him too much so if you are coming in free to play and you want the best options for monsters that just require one copy, first, the definitely the best one is going to be Blue Eyes White Dragon. Blue Eyes White Dragon is hands down the best boss monster in Cross Duel, and it is not integral that you get any other copies. You just need the master skill to destroy anything. Next, I'm going to say Firewall Dragon is pretty good, albeit you will have to commit your entire account to link summoning this can have pretty explosive effects that even is more powerful than blue eyes it just requires a little bit of setup also i'm gonna say stardust is very very good the reincarnation strategy is not super hard to build around there are a lot of low rarity monsters in the game that have it and stardust is going to be ideal at, at least two copies with a, you know having two skills Utopia is very good at one skill and is ideal at two to three skills. It is just a super powerhouse and almost unbeatable monster at two to three skills. So Utopia is very free to play friendly, super good at just one copy. And Neos as well is going to be the honorable mention just because he is absolutely busted at three skills and he is okay at one 
not the best but he is usable and that's gonna be it i'm not gonna recommend you pick anyone okay odd eyes is the only other guy i recommend you pick however keep in mind you will have to build your entire account around pendulum summoning uh once you pick this guy other than that i'm not gonna recommend that you pick anyone else because they're all very niche strategies that you really only want to build into if you pull multiple copies of them again the newer cards like seven's road magician and dragaeus they are nice but i feel like they are just a little too situational dragaeus is nice and building it to extra attack may not be super hard but you're literally like banking your entire strategy off having to connect with your opponent's life points and you're gonna have to use a lot of resources on individual monsters to really make them connect and seven's road is the same way i feel your inventors they don't have to survive they just have to be played but you are going to need monsters to survive to summon sevens road so i don't know how that is going to work so let me know what you guys think what you picked for your first ace and what you're thinking of but yeah thank you guys for joining me and let's get cross doula baby see you later